seven laws that apply to all mankind. One of those laws was against murder. Now the rabbis tell us there's more ways than one to commit murder. If you speak evil of a man and your report is believed, you have murdered him. You have murdered his name. And to this, the rabbis say, carries a penalty worthy of death. It doesn't say they should be put to death, but a penalty worthy of death. If that Noahite law was fulfilled today, there'd be a lot of people worthy of death concerning Rabbi Meir Khan. To fulfill a mitzvah is not just not to do it. It's to do the opposite to it. For example, don't steal against theft is not fulfilled until you give charity, the opposite of theft. Not to murder is more than just not to kill someone, it's to save a life. And it behooves us tonight to give honor to him who has been so dishonored, a real friend of Israel and B'nai Noah, Rabbi Meir Kahana. Witnesses saith the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, that you may know me and believe me, and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no deliverer. I have declared, and I have saved, and I have shown. And there is no strange God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, saith the Lord. But I am God. More than any people on this earth, you people who are sitting here are the witnesses of the Lord. For you people, are those for whom the world was created. The people to witness that there is one God, omnipotent, all-powerful, and there is none beside him. Hodul Hashem Kitov Ki Lelam Chazdo Give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. You people are making history. You people are bringing the world back to the purpose for which the Almighty made it. And for that we say, Shem Kito, praise the Lord, for he is good. For he has shown you the way, but more important, you have taken up the challenge. You have taken up the way. And may God bless you. And give you the strength to fight all of those who in their tininess and in their pettiness and in their jealousies will attempt to defame. And remember, defamation is the last refuge of non-thinkers. Those who cannot debate will defame. Those who are, who are afraid to discuss and to challenge will call names and smear. And remember another thing. 
members never decided truth. Abraham was called the Hebrew, Ha'ivri, in Hebrew language. The rabbis asked, why was he called Ha'ivri? When they say because it, it comes from the Hebrew word Ever, which means side. The whole world stood on one side, and he stood alone on the other side, and he said, I am right, and he was right. I live in Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. They want to speak to you a bit about the incredible days in which we live. For from the beginning of time until now, there has never yet been a time such as now. And he who has ears to listen and eyes to see can hear and can see the coming of the Messiah. These are the days in which we live. We have seen miracles that generations far greater than we were not privileged to see. He bangs on the door. He beats upon it. And he says, Open for me and I bring you the redemption. And the key to that door is faith. Faith. I live in Israel. And I hear the nations waving and, and shouting and yelling and condemning us in Israel. And I hear, even from this country, and it is a great country, people telling us where we can live in Jerusalem and where we cannot live in what land we are allowed to, to keep, in what land we are not allowed to keep. With all respect to President Bush, let the word go out from here. The burning bush is the bush that we follow. I want to speak to you about Israel and why in our times we have seen the beginning of the final redemption. What did our generation have? What does it have that we merited such a magnificent fulfillment of the prophecies of this great book, the Tanakh? In the book of Yechezkel, Ezekiel, chapter 36, one of the great, great chapters of Tanakh, he speaks of our time and that each one listen and study and this isn't a speech, this is a Bible lesson, a lesson in Tanakh. I sometimes sit and discuss with Jews, with, with rabbis, who say, how can you say that the state of Israel is God's hand? Look at the people who founded it. Look at the people who run it. Are they men of piety? Are they men of faith? Certainly the first Jewish state was founded by Joshua, men of faith. Observed the commandments. The second state, Ezra. The Chemia, the Maya. They were men of faith, they believe, they observe. But look at this thing. How can you say that the people found this thing secular, non believers? How can you say that the state that they found it is God's hand? It's a good question. A question that has to be answered. And the answer is to be found in chapter 36 of Cheskin. He speaks in the name of God concerning the exile. And he says, 
and I scatter them among the nations. And I disperse them among the lands. And they came onto the onto the nations where they came. Some went to England, some to Germany, some to Poland, and some to Yemen, and some to Dallas Fort Worth. And they came on to the nations whither they, they came. And they desecrated my holy name. What is he saying here? Simply because the Jews went in, into the exile, did that mean that ipso facto they desecrated God's name? If you travel to Brooklyn, you see. Synagogues, and rabbis, and grand rabbis, and you see people observing Jewish Jewish law. Where do you see an exile in which they desecrated God's name? He answers his own question. His he he answers our question by continuing. They desecrated my holy name. How? The Molahim, in that the nation said concerning the Jews, I'm a Shemin, these are the people of the Lord, whom they are so yatsal, and we drove them out of their lands. Do you know what desecration really means? You have to learn Hebrew for that. That will also come. It comes from the Hebrew word Chilud which means a vacuum, space, empty. When the Jew is persecuted and when the Jew is desecrated, when the Jew is beaten and humiliated, what is the Gentile saying? He is saying, there is no God in Israel, for if there was, he would not allow me to do this to his people. And so the desecration of the Jew is the desecration of the Lord. The exile per se is desecration. For Jewish weakness is desecration. I remember speaking once to a survivor of the Holocaust. He said... The worst thing about Auschwitz was not even that so many Jews died there, but that the Germans laughed at us and they mocked us and they said, Oh Jews, where is your God? Let him help you now. That was Chidul Hashem. That was a humiliation not only of the Jew, but of the God of the Jews. And the prophet continues, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, That which I intend to do to bring you back to your land, I do not do for your sake. You don't deserve it. Kim Meshem Kochi I do it for my holy name. I shall heal out them that you desecrated by being among the nations in the exile. Jewish weakness, the fact that over the centuries the Jewish trumpet upon, spat upon, beaten, gassed, and burned. To those who did that, the message was clear. There is no God in Israel. And so, if Jewish weakness is the desecration of God's name, how do we sanctify God's name? By surely by the opposite. By Jewish strength and by Jewish victory. And so he says, V'kidashti et shmi hagadol hamchulal magoyim 
and I will sanctify my great name, which was desecrated among the nations. The Yadua Goyim Kenu Hashem, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord. How? The Kachivachem Lenechem, when I am sanctified through you, before your very eyes. And the Kachtiat Chem in I will take you out of the nations. The Kibatsiat Chem Ikol I will gather you in from all the lands. And I will return you to your land. The state of Israel was not given to the Jewish people because they deserved it. We are not deserving of it. We are not the kinds of people that God wanted us to be. We are not that holy nation, that special people. He gave it to us because there was a certain point in history where the Almighty no longer averts his eyes. And there he says, enough, enough of the desecration of my name, enough of people saying, that mocking me and saying, where is your God? Where is your God, O Israel? Where is our God? Look at him as the soldiers of Israel, the descendants of those Jews who were so beaten and so, and so trampled upon in the ghettos as they now march in the streets of Jerusalem. You think you haven't seen miracles? You think that age of miracles is gone? We have seen miracles in our days that our ancestors never saw. People that for 1900 years driven from its land, suffering crusades and inquisitions and pogroms and Auschwitz is large and small, returning to its land exactly as the Bible said. You think that's an ordinary thing? You think that that just happens? It never happened to anyone except to the Jewish people the chosen of God. We win a war in six days. In six days we won. Who wins wars in six days? The Almighty made the land in six days and we took it in six days. And on the seventh, we both rested. You think that's an ordinary thing? You think that simply happens? Every day that Israel exists, it exists because of Europe. Surrounded by 110 million bitter enemies who daily dream of wiping it out. And of course, they will never wipe it out because the Almighty has called us home, called us to return. And please, God, the next time I see you, I don't want it to be in Fort Worth. I want you to come and visit me in Jerusalem. And I want to take you into the settlements and to see the real Israel. To see the settlements that our enemies say should not be there. They will be there. And they will multiply by the tens and by the hundreds and by the thousands. And I want you to watch the children. We owe Hitler two million babies. And we will repay him with interest. For Hitler's will come and Hitler's will go. But the Jewish people will remain forever. When I went to Israel almost 20 years ago, I went to Hebron, to Hebron. And I took my then four-year-old son with me. We had just finished studying that day in Yeshiva the story of how Abraham 
was told by God to go out into the night and to look at the stars and he was asked, can you count the stars? And it was a summer night in, in Chavron and the sky was ablaze with stars. And I said to him, Benjamin, you see, that's how it was that night in this place. And who knows, perhaps you're standing exactly where Abraham stood. And he looked down at his feet, a little child of four. And I thought to myself, praise be the Lord, he is good. Because I've come home to shake hands with Abraham and with my son. But you think there are no miracles? Every day there are miracles. We're partners, you and I, the Jewish people, and you. We're partners and we are witnesses to the Lord. And someday, when the nation shall beat their swords into plowshares, there will be a wonderful peace. But until that day, when my enemies have swords, I won't have plowshares. You've taken the first steps in a tremendous journey. And I envy you. I envy you. Because you are making history. I have no words for Wendell. He is someone who, who will go down in history as having returned the world to its original goal. And taken people who have eyes but who could not see and open their eyes. Who had ears but could not listen and open their ears. I want to thank you for being what you are. And I want to tell you Never ever believe that you can reach a certain plateau and stay there. A person either climbs the mountain or he falls. Never stay at the same place. Climb the mountain. That's why God made us. He gave us life in this world and it is short. How long do we live? 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. But a person who lives that life the way it should be, that is the greatest of all heavens that he can possibly reach. So reach that ripe old, old age and look back upon a life which may have been difficult, but in which you did the kind of things that the Almighty wanted you to. May God bless you and may he bless Israel. May we see the coming of the Messiah speedily happy in our days. Amen, Amen.